On Radio 4, another helping of the great Scott, as David Tennant returns in the guise of Walter Scott to tell us the story of the heart of Midlothian. Call Jenny Dean! Call Jenny Dean! Are you mad? She won't lie. She knows her sister will be executed if she doesn't. She knew that before. On her own territory, butler. This is a courtroom. She won't. Trust me. I've known her since we were bairns. Well, we're about to find out. Welcome, listeners, to the heart of Midlothian. A highly dramatic tale based on almost true events, written originally in three-volume novel form by myself, Sir Walter Scott, and now adapted for the wireless with brutal economy by someone called Mike Harris. Miss Dean. You are the older sister of the accused. I am, sir. You are 20 years old? Yes, sir. And you understand why Effie Dean, your 17-year-old sister, is accused of murdering her baby? Yes. And you also understand that only one piece of evidence can now save your sister? I think so, sir. Well, let's be certain. If your sister told anyone that she was pregnant before the baby disappeared, this law assumes that she didn't murder her child. I understand that, sir. But if she told no one, the law assumes she has murdered the bairn herself or conspired in its murder. Do you understand that? I do, sir. Now, Jenny Dean, did your sister Effie tell you that she was pregnant. Jenny, save me! The defendant will remain silent. Proceed. Jenny, did your sister tell you she was pregnant? For the love of God, Jenny! Uh, One more interruption and he will be removed from the court. Jenny Dean, answer the question or be in contempt. Yes or no, Jenny? No. Speak up! No, my lord. She did not. You've killed me, Jenny! You've killed your own sister! We're not worried about that! You've saved me! Forgive me, dear listener, for not pointing out that this is the year of our Lord, 1734. We are in Edinburgh and are now following our heroine, Jenny Dean, and her childhood sweetheart, Reuben Butler, out of the courthouse into the middle of an angry mob. They're here to judge me, Reuben. Oh, dear Lord. Stay there. Let's see what they're about. There's no justice in the world where our lairds and masters can change the laws at will. Excuse me. How can they pardon a man who ordered these soldiers to shoot on the people? Let me pass, please. A man who took a musket out of the hands of one of his own men and shot a pregnant woman in cold blood. Now, the voice we just heard belongs to a fierce old hag of forbidding aspect. But she stands on a box next to a much younger, very pretty girl, admittedly dressed most fantastically, but seemingly not as angry. So Reuben decides to question her. Excuse me, miss. Bloody Captain Porteous deserves death! That's Mama! No, pardon! Uh, excellent. Now, I wonder... She's Meg, and I'm Madge. Good day, Madge. I was wanting to ask you... If, if you're looking for business, you've come to the right shop. Mister? No, 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 good God, no. I mean, thank you, but uh, I'm nearly in. I I want to know what all these good people are so angry about. The King's pardoned a murderer of some sort. But not Effie Dean. Did she order the Redcoats to shoot on the people? No. Then it's not her. I'm no very expensive, you know. Thank you, but I have a a pressing appointment. Uh, Jenny, it's all right. Follow me. And Mama says I can't charge so much as the other lassies on account of being cracked in the head. (laughs) When Butler gets Jenny home, she breaks down and runs sobbing to bed. But her strict Presbyterian father pays no heed, for he is re-reading his Old Testament, judges to be precise, by whose lights he has already condemned her sinful sister to the flames of hell. 
so Butler returns wearily to the Tollbooth prison, known locally, and with no little irony, as the Heart of Midlothian, where the mob is now bigger, uglier and angrier. So he gains access through a side door and makes his way to the dingy cell where Jenny's sister Effie sits waiting for a sadly inevitable verdict. Why couldn't she tell just one wee lie for me, Reuben? Because she is good and true and godly. What's the use of godly if it didn't have human feelings? She just ran sobbing into her bedroom, Effie. So there's still hope? She's loved you since you were Burns, Reuben. Can you not try to change her mind? Do you think I haven't? Her lawyers tried. The prosecutors tried. Nobody likes this law, but she will not, she cannot, break the word of God. Oh, it's the devil coming to drag me down to hell. It's, it's more likely the mob. My God, they're blowing off the gates. They're coming for me. They think I killed my bird. Calm down. They want Captain Porteous. Oh, Lord, forgive me for I've sinned. Forgive me, please for, forgive me. Forget about them and listen to me, Effie Dean. You have one chance left to save your life. What chance? Give them the feather. What do you mean? Well, he claims to be a gentleman as well as a smuggler, yes? Aye, very well spoken, English and everything. Aye, well, governments hate smugglers for they rob them of revenues, but smugglers who disgrace their class, they're hated even more. Tell me his name, Effie. No. Tell me where he is. I'll tell the magistrate and he might just petition the king to have you transported rather than hung. No. For heaven's sake, why not? My own sister wouldn't he lie to save my worthless life. Why should I betray my own true love to save it? Are you in there, Effie? Oh, my dear lord, it's him. My sweet, I'm in here. Who is it? And the answer to that is, well, the strangest figure Reuben Butler has ever seen. Half man, half woman. Tall, muscular, bearded, bewigged, and dressed in the most fantastical, party-coloured female garments. Garments Reuben felt he had seen before, but could not place. Effie, come with me quickly. There's a carriage waiting outside prison, and... Who the hell are you, sir? The Reverend Reuben Butler. And you, sir? Or should I say, madam? And what are you doing alone with Effie? He's Jenny's betrothed. Is he? Well... That's lucky for him, for I was about to slit his gizzard for insulting you with his pasty-faced presence. Now, come on, my lovely. The castle militia will be here soon enough. No, George. Oh, for God's sake, don't use my name. I'm sorry, but I'm not coming. we have found Porteous, Mark. <sighs> oh, one minute. Oh, God. Uh, what? One minute. What are you talking about? I'm worthless, so I may as well die. Marge, come on, will you? Get to your feet. Come on. Won't you go? Come. Get off me. My father condemns me. My parents gone. My sister condemns me. I have neither honour nor purpose. Oh, no time for this. I gave up my baby to a hag that killed me. Leave her be, Madge. Or George, or whatever your name is. If you're going to come and stop him soon, now take him to death. Oh. I thought he can be hung decent. For the last time, Effie, come on. No, no. For the love of Christ, leave her no. be. So be it. I've never forced any woman, and I'm not starting now, but I will take you. What for? You're a man of the cloth. Yes? I've got work for you. And with that, he lets go of the girl he ruined and drags Butler out of the cell with a dirk at his throat. And from thence, down many stone steps, leading ultimately to the inner courtyard of the prison, during which seemingly interminable journey, the hapless Butler occupies himself interrogating his strangely begowned and bearded captor. An honourable man with a kiddie's life to save her. I'd have done that already if I thought it would work, but... There's a more certain way left. What way? After you've done this wee job for me. Is Effie's baby dead? What? Effie's baby. The cause of all this. How would I know? Effie says you gave it away. I did, but the hag I gave it to sold it on. Who to? An equally foul <coughs> hag who's disappeared with it. Or the first hag pocketed my <coughs> money and killed it. Now stop struggling and come through here. I won't kill you if you do as I say. <coughs> And when Butler finally arrives at the inner courtyard at the heart of the heart of Midlothian, he finds himself called upon to play a part in a scene apparently dramatised by his captor from Dante's Inferno, in which a filthy drunken mob are about to tear apart, limb from limb, the bloody semblance of a human being. What do you want me to do? I want you to help me stop them murdering Captain Porteous. But you encouraged them to do it! But I want it done with more ceremony. 
as befits a gentleman murderer. Why should they listen to me? Because you're a priest and they're used to listening to your jabbering cant. So, <coughs> here we go again. <coughs> Leave him be! And listen to the man of God here, will ye? Or ye'll taste the wrath of the Almighty, as well as match wildfire's claymore! And lo, as the gentleman in ladies' clothes predicted, the mob goes quiet. Tell him to back off while I put the noose around his neck. I won't do that. You will if you want this dirk to stay outside your guts. And so Butler does as he is bid. Please! Dear God! Save me! And thus, despite the King's pardon, Captain Porteous of the Royal Edinburgh Militia is hung by the people for firing on the people when they had gathered together simply to demand cheaper bread. Dear God! Oh Lord! Stop mewling. It's justice. You didn't do this for justice. No? No, you did it so you could rescue Effie from justice. From injustice. But what's the difference? Justice, injustice, truth and lies are all fiction. Meaning shifts like the wind and in the end we're all dead. So stop your canting. And take this message to Jenny Dean. Yeah. After which, the fantastical figure leaps upon a stolen horse and disappears into the night, leaving a bewildered butler to make his way back once more to Jenny Dean's cottage, where, as he is about to enter, he hears a stranger's voice. And so, Jenny, you will marry me, yes? At which our heartbroken priest staggers back in horror and considers leaving Scotland forever in order to devote himself to bringing Presbyterianism to the heathen Hottentot. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. What? But I... Why ever not? Uh, for one, because you're the laird and I'm just a farm girl. If I cared a pish or a pibble for that, would I come visiting you in your father's dirty wee hovel day in, day out all these years? We all your frowsy neighbours laughing at me behind their hands? You said you were visiting my dad, sir. So if you were visiting me, you should have said, and I could have put you out of your misery earlier. Because of the next reason. Which is? I have been promised to another uh, since we were both weans. You've been what? To who? At which point, Reuben Butler, having bethought himself of the Hottentot option, storms into the room. Who is this man <laughs> kneeling in front of you, my love? Uh, it's the Laird Dumbydykes, Reuben. You've met him before, I think. A long time ago. Uh, please, get up, my no. lord. This is Reuben Butler. Sir? Was your mother one of my father's maidservants? She was. God's porridge, Jenny. He called you love. Him. That. Is he the one you preferred to me? With his threadbare coat and his paltry wig and his... his nose? Well, I know when I'm no wanted, so I shall take my leave. Forth with. Aye, do that. I will. Off you go then. I'm on my way. Don't worry. Forever. Oh. <laughs> uh, mind the step, my lord. <laughs> Good day to you, madam. Is that a letter from Effie? Was he proposing? Uh, give it to me, Reuben, for pity's sake. Thank you. He's a rich man. Aye. But I can't marry anyone now. This isn't Effie's hand. But you can't marry anyone. It says I'm to meet whoever this is at Salisbury Crags. But you're saying you can't marry me, Jenny? Who gave you this, Reuben? Why can't you marry me? For the same reason I couldn't marry that noddlehead Dumby Dykes. Except in your case, it pains me more than I can say. Now, are you going to tell me who sent me this or not? Uh, a man who just tried to rescue Effie from prison dressed in women's clothes. What? Exactly. But who? The man who got her with child, a... Uh, a ridiculous English aristocrat or some such playing at being a smuggler. Why can't you marry me now, Jenny? Because I carry Effie's shame with me. And you're a preacher, and you'd never get a living of any kind with me as your wife. So I think you'd better go. But, Jenny... Just go, will you? You intend meeting this man? If it's to help Effie... I'll come with you. <laughs> no, you won't. Why not? He says I'm to meet him alone. But he's a proven seducer. I'm a man of low appetites. And, and I'm the woman who wouldn't save her sister from hanging when she could have. So I don't think I've got much reputation to lose, have I? Now, leave me alone, Reuben Butler. 
or I might start to hate you instead of loving you more than I can say. And so Reuben Butler leaves his beloved and wends his weary way home to his miserable lodgings in a malodorous alley off Princess Street, cursing his fate and wishing that Effie Dean had never set eyes on the dangerous man her sister Jenny was to meet that night in one of the wildest, loneliest places the country round Edinburgh can offer. Until... Your name, sir? Who is asking, sir? Take hold of him. Uh, uh, what are you doing? Uh, take your hands off me. I am a minister in the Court of Scotland. And I am the law. And before he knows it, poor Reuben is back in the heart of Midlothian. But this time, being interrogated by the very judge who presided over Effie's trial. You're sure this so-called mad wildfire was a man in disguise? Yes. And that he is the seducer of Effie Dean? He said it himself, and as I keep telling you, he is to meet Jenny Dean tonight in... Oh my God, in an hour's time, so you should be going there to save her instead of Please talking to... Darling! Take your filthy oh hands off me and I'll cut off your privy car! Such a racket, you have a heart! me! Oh. Are these the women, jailer? Oh. Aye, sir. Ah, uh-huh, then bring them in. Oh. Again! And so we meet the real Madge Wildfire and her mother, Meg Murdoxon, whom you last heard calling for Captain Porteous to be hung. What right is that piece of shite to drag me out of my bed like I was a common criminal when the rich folks steal the food out of the moods of the poor to pay for their mansions? Oh, and be quiet! And food and oh, be quiet or I'll have you taken out and whipped! And you, you just stop that caterwauling! Good. Now, Mr. Butler. Did you not hear me? Do you know Ken? She's soft in the heat. Shush, Madge. Butler. Is this the person who caused a riot and then caused Captain Porteous to be hung? No. But she seems to be wearing the exact same clothes. He were wearing my clothes? Be quiet! One word more and I have you flogged. Soft in the head or not. Now, how did he get your clothes? Well, lost your tongue now, have you? Did you just say you'd flog her if she said another word? Not if I ask her a direct question. Ah, well, you didn't make that clear, did you? And my Madge has got a very literal way of thinking on account of what was done to her by the very same man who took her clothes yesterday. But why did he take her clothes? For a disguise. He could have chosen a less conspicuous one. Aye, well, he likes to startle and dismay. You know him? I might. Was it you he gave Effie's baby to? I couldn't say. Is it dead or alive? I couldn't say. You have to. A girl's life depends on it. Um, I'll ask the questions if you don't mind, Mr Butler. Well, is it? I couldn't say. Why? I couldn't say. <sighs> what is the real name of its father? Effie called him George. What's his second name? I couldn't say. Why are you protecting him? I have my reasons. Do you think a spell and change would help you remember them? I couldn't say. Oh, stop saying that, you exasperating hag. We can take the man himself if we go to the place where he's meeting Jenny. That's easier said than done. Salisbury Crags is a wilderness and it's getting dark. Oh, well, my Madge knows how to get there easily. Are you still here? Will you fling these two in the cells, will you? Ah, with it's pleasure, sir. And give them a good flogging first. Aye. I'm trying to tell you that Madge knows a quick way to Salisbury Crags. Eh, hey, what's that? She takes gentlemen there. Knows it better than she knows her own self. She'll lead you straight to the spot. We'll take the simpleton, but not the hat. I'm not going nowhere without my mom. We're wasting time, sir. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right, both of them. But keep them close to you and keep them tied. <laughs> 